Jaish Nakshatra. It's a constellation of stars based on Antares, which is the beautiful bright red star that's often referred to as the heart of the scorpion. In sidereal coordinates, it's 16 degrees 40 minutes to 30 degrees of Scorpio, which in tropical is 12 degrees 40 minutes to 26 degrees Sagittarius. So if you got something between these degrees, you got something in Jeshta Nakshatra. Jeshta Nakshatra is the star of eminence, greatness, but it's accompanied by rivalry and jealousy and deception. The symbol for this nakshatra has three symbols. The main symbol is an amulet, a magical supernatural protective device. Another symbol is an umbrella, which is also a protective device. Another symbol is an earring. So the amulet, the umbrella, and the earring, they're all royal symbols, and they're all um, protective things as well. And you might notice Indian people like to wear e umbrellas as earrings. The Devata of Jeshta is Indra. And actually, the word Indra and the word Jeshta mean the same thing. They both, they both mean the most eminent, the best. Jeshta Putra is your first child. Indra is the Jeshta Devata, the leader of the gods. He's in charge of the rest of the gods. No matter how you read about Indra, you definitely easily, quickly find out that he's got a great position, but a lot of problems that come with it. And that's the main theme of this nakshatra. To be really great, to have excellence, but along with that excellence comes a lot of problems. You get a high position, you get a lot of rivals, and you get involved in a lot of jealousy. That's what Jeshta is about. The rivalry and jealousy that gets involved with being the best. Jeshta nakshatra is Tishna, which means it's bitter. There's a few nakshatras that are bitter. Jeshta is one of them. So in bitter nakshatras, you get a mixture of good and bad things together and you have to go through difficult things or you have to do difficult things in order to get the thing which you desire. So the, desires, uh, th the desirable thing gets mixed up with undesirable things. So that's the nature of Jishta. You have a high position, you have a great skill, you're very talented, you have a great quality, but it, along with that comes all kinds of drama. If you have planets in this nakshatra, then you're really going to need an amulet, an umbrella, a magic earring to protect you. And the best one is humility. If you wear this magic mantra, never bragging, you'll get protected from all this stuff. Okay, now I'll tell you one or two stories or things about these symbols, the amulet, the umbrella, and the earrings. First of all, about the earrings and the umbrella. This is a particularly interesting story because it involves the planet Mars. Mars is Kuja. Kuja is Narakasura. Narakasura is a sun born as a result of rape of the planet Earth by a demon. So he once stormed into paradise and broke into Indra's palace and stole his royal umbrella and stole his mother's earrings. What's so special about her earrings? Her earrings were produced at the same incident that produced Rahu Ketu where the ocean was being churned and magical things were coming out of the ocean. So the ocean is a source of jewels and the most glorious jewels came out from the ocean at that time. So this is like the supreme royal jewel are these earrings and then his royal umbrella. Naragasura came and stole them. So Indra asked Krishna and his courageous wife Satibhama. Krishna and Satibhama defeated Naragasura and took back the umbrella and earring gave it back to Indra. So the story just besides being interesting shows you what happens when you're rich and then you have to put it install an alarm system when you're the king of heaven then you get all these asuras coming and t trying to break into your palace and take your stuff so that's what jaisha is all about being the best but then having to deal with being the best now another story is the story of indra's amulet what is indra's amulet let's hear about this story 
One of the problems with Jesha Nakshatra is pride. That's why I'm saying the real amulet is humility, not flaunting things. The downfall of Indra is his pride. And again and again and again, it leads him into problems. So that's an important lesson for Jeshta Nakshatra. Indra, being very proud on one occasion, insulted Brihaspati, his priest, the Devata of Pushya Nakshatra. He insulted Brihaspati and Brihaspati said, what's this guy's needs? I'm going to teach this guy a lesson. I'm going to disappear. Without a priest, you can't get magic power. Then without magic power, you're not really going to be able to defend the gods in paradise. So then Indra, all of a sudden, he was so proud of being the king of heaven, but when his priest disappeared, he, he became weak. Indra lost paradise. The, the anti-gods, the demons, came and took it over. So then Indra went to Brahma and he said, what, what am I supposed to do? And Brahma said, well, you should get another priest. Well, who should I get? Well, you should get Maya's son. Maya is the architect for the demons. You heard about him in Chitranakshatra. So he went to Maya and got his son, Vishwarupa, to be his new priest. Vishwarupa was a great priest, a great technologist. See, this priest sounds like a religious, religious thing to us nowadays, but in those days it meant technology. And so he taught Indra how to do this amazing magic, this amazing technology of putting armor on himself by mantra making his skin as, as powerful as armor by mantra. So once Indra had this Narayan Kavach armor, mantra armor, he could take over paradise again. He kicked the demons out of paradise and took it back for the gods. So all well, is good for a while, but then Indra uh, find, comes to find out that his priest, Vishrupa, every time he does some kind of a ceremony, he gives a little bit of the power from it to his relatives because he's, he's the son of Maya, and Maya is the architect for the anti-gods. So he gives a little bit of that energy to the anti-gods, and Indra says, this is a traitor. He's a traitor, and he kills him. This is another important lesson for people with planets in Jesha Nakshatra. Don't be so quick to, to jump and decide that somebody is a traitor or somebody is your enemy. Vishvarupa was helping Indra. He helped him tremendously. He was also being a little bit fair and also helping his family. So Indra rushed to judge that Vishrupa was a traitor and cut off his head, or his three heads. He actually had three heads. So when Vishrupa's dad, Maya, found out, he was furious. My son, who sacrificed his lineage as a demon to come and help you, and he helps you take back over your paradise and kick out his own kin, and then you kill him as a traitor? Yes. What kind of a fool are you? So he's furious, and he summoned this monster called Vritra, who was undefeatable. He just swallowed up all the weapons of the gods, just walked right into paradise. And Indra and all the gods had to flee for their lives. This time they said, we're not going to go to Brahma for advice. We're going to go to in uh, Vishnu for advice. So Vishnu said, yes, you need a more powerful form of this mantra that gives you armor. He, he said, actually, the person who originated this mantra is a sage called Dadhichi. He's mastered so thoroughly that his bones are as hard as thunderbolt. If you can get his bones and you give it to your architect, Vishwakarma, let Vishwakarma make a weapon out of this material. It's harder than diamonds. It's harder than thunderbolts then you can use that weapon, this thunderbolt weapon, that's Indra's thunderbolt weapon, you can use that thunderbolt weapon to kill Prithra. You'll be able to cut off his head with that. And then Indra used the thunderbolt weapon and def did defeat Vritrasura and got paradise back. And then apologized to his priest and things got back to normal. One more story to tell you. This one is just too good to not tell. So this story is how Indra became full of eyes, to put it nicely. Indra is always checking out people to see who's, who's going to be challenging him, who is developing more power than him. 
and he's always particularly worried about yogis because they get these supernatural powers that are very difficult to deal with. So he always keeps his eyes on the sages and the yogis. But when, while keeping his eyes on Gautama Rishi, his eyes happen to fall upon Gautama's wife. And of course Indra, being Indra, says, well, I want that. I want that woman. So he waited for Gautama to go out and do his meditation on the bank of a river somewhere. And then he went into the humble hut, looking exactly like Gautama. And he said, my wife, I love you. Let's embrace. And she was very happy. And they, they made love. But you can't trick a rishi. You can't trick a sage. So Gautama goes back to his hermitage and he catches Indra in the act. And classic line he delivers. He says, you are so into vagina. You should be one. Your balls and your penis should fall off and you should become covered in vaginas. Because he's a sage, it's not just a threat. It actually happens because he says it. He cursed Indra and then all of a sudden Indra gets a, a thousand vaginas all over his body and his penis and his balls fall off. Then he runs to this river, uh, to this lake actually, where Lakshmi is residing and he prays to Lakshmi in a lotus flower. Help me with this, please. Look at this, this is horrible. Lakshmi says, well, you know, not, the gods cannot undo uh, what the sages do. The sages are more powerful than the gods. So I can't really change this, but I can help you with it. I can make it to your advantage. First of all, I'll give you back a penis. And it'll be the penis of a ram. You'll really like this. It's a very manly penis. And I will change all these vaginas into eyes. Or I'll put an eyeball in the middle of each one. I'm not sure how handsome Indra is anymore. But now he has a thousand eyes. He's full of eyes. So that helps him keep his eye on everything. And it also shows his paranoia. This really illustrates Jaisa Nakshatra. Being too eager to experience the best things or to be the best and then winding up dealing with so much drama and intrigue as a result and having to be so paranoid and all that. So the general solution is humility. Of course, the rest of the chart has to be consulted on an individual basis to see what's, what's the whole context of your life. But just in isolation, when you have jeshta, this is the dynamic that arises from it, and the solution is humility.